Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 108. And we're delighted to be joined by a, a, a father-son combo today with uh, Mark and Max Smith Halverson. How are we both doing, lads? Very good. Yeah, very good. Thank Thanks you. for thinking of us. There you Pleasure. Are. I, tell you, I tell you what, let's go straight in. Max is generally really nervous about this. So I think it's all, we've got a big job in my hand to just calm down the situation. Yeah. So why are you so nervous? Let's just tear down some I, walls. I, don't know. I mean, I think it's just because I listened to it every day on the way to work. And then I came back, what, two days ago? And you said, oh, I've been speaking to Chrissy. And he, uh, he, he said about me going on to the, the podcast. And I, and I said, we. And I thought... <laughs> Well, what do you mean us or like you? And he was like, no, no, like, like me and you. And I said, well, they only have quite important people on there. Like, <laughs> you know, people Which like that. Which is why I was so Yeah, and, and, he went, and he went, well, well, yeah, that's why I'm on there. And I was like, yeah, but I'm I'm coming along too. So, no, yeah, the, I was uh, I am a bit nervous. Like, <laughs> good man, good man. Keeps you on your toes. As you know from the podcast, we, we try and get like sort of all angles of the sport. And it's quite a, you know, quite a niche thing. Like a, obviously with the, your history and then the fact that, uh, you, you know, you're coming racing this year with Nick and... And Mac, the other Max, in a very similar position, and uh, we're just chatting before the, the podcast started. We were up at uh, Croft for the No Limits meeting, and we're just talking about sort of those family connections. And it's funny because Dom's dad's been out today as well, so that's like so another family connection. And uh, how was that for you? Because it's been a long while since the crash, hasn't it? I t- yeah, I was about to say because I was, I was actually briefly telling the lads here. Them. Basically, it was 2019, wasn't it? Classic TT. My dad, unfortunately, um, his bike malfunctioned. And by malfunction, I mean it shit itself. So he was stepping in. <laughs> now, the left the left before the veranda, I keep getting the name of the corner wrong. Anyway, so it's that famous turn where Connor Cummins decides to become hand glider for two seconds. My dad's gone in. Unfortunately, um, he tried to go through the mountain. Broke his, I mean, made an absolute mess of his right femur. It was in three different bits. Nearly lost his leg, everything like that. But... Bear in mind, he's, um, he's 60. He would hate me for saying that on air. He really would. But you yeah. have. That I have. Just slightly slide it in there. Yeah. You'll give me a slap when I get home. Don't you worry. But uh, no, he, he he shouldn't be here with that accident. And he's just such a strong-willed man that he's he's been able to get home, rebuild the bike. And the bike was, well, the only thing salvageable really was the paddock stance. You know what I mean? That was it. was an absolute mess. So he's put so much time and effort in. He's been driving me dear mother crazy, working hours and hours and hours, you know, getting the bike built back up. Got it all done, but swinging your leg back over on a bike is a total different story. He's been back out on the bike today, and he was only going to do one session. But unlucky for me, lucky for him, my um, my bike didn't turn up. Uh, the lad who built the bike, he's actually had to go to hospital. So get well soon, Neil, if you are listening. And yeah, I gave Dad my spot. And to be honest, for me, I'm the opposite end to what you two are. Yeah. It's like you're a father looking at your son going, oh, do you know, all right, go, go on, pull your finger out your ass, but let's just learn and go steady. Yeah. It's that yeah. little bat I can imagine. But for me, it was the polar opposite. I'm looking at my dad going, do not bollocks this up because my mother will kill us. <laughs> you I can imagine it was the same thing, right? <laughs> oh, I told you it was, yeah. it was just like, oh my, you know, it was, it was like just yeah. like go out and enjoy it. And then uh, typically like... The, the father that I grew up admiring and wanting to be like I want to be him you know what I mean? he's my hero and he just thought within one lap thing and he's going to take a steady bollocks to that he was head down arse up on a bike he's just built after a year and he's yeah. just scratching the living crap yeah. out of it but no having that was really really special but yeah how, how are you finding uh, the, <laughs> being on the sort of opposite end of the thing with having Max out there um fine um I've been around racing a long time and so we all know what the ultimately what the dangers are but in context with the rest of life um, particularly as we've just seen with the pandemic and stuff where you can be standing still and not realise what's going to happen next Mm -hmm. um, I'm fine Mm -hmm. Um, do I get nervous at particular points you know starts of races yeah you'd be crazy if you said no yeah Mm -hmm. but that's just about the start of a race right it's not like oh well my son loses his right arm in a crash at the first corner, it's it's not like that. No. Um, so um, I'm I'm really glad that he's enjoying it. Uh, I've got no aspirations for him. Only happy for him to have some aspirations and enjoy, like I did donkeys years ago, racing motorcycles. Mm. Is what it's all about. How how long have you been riding now, Max? Uh, I started racing t- mm. 2016. Last year, you you had the superbikes. Yeah, we when we were uh, the last year did the. BSB mm-hmm. as a 
team owner, um, Max did the KTM Cup, yeah. um, which was great running three riders in the top paddock <laughs> and having my son about 300 yards away as a novice. There's a couple of eyes on me down pit lane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With all your hair, I do not know whether the stress. Yeah. Was, was that always the plan? Did you always have your eyes on eventually getting racing or as you were because in sort of today's world mm. you know people are start like I've been uh, pit biking today and there's lads there that are like five and six on these mini bikes yeah. did, if, as you were growing up did you did you have aspirations of racing or? yeah I think I always did it uh, obviously I grew up around it all the time didn't we just watching you race actually before you was managing a team mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I always wanted to do it I just left it probably quite late as a as a kid considering I wanted to do it so early I think I was 14 at the time you really mess it up you could have, you could have started if he 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 actually uh, conned his mum into becoming a supporter of the idea, whereas yeah. a, before that she was vehemently against it. Yeah. And it, it, it somehow reversed. or another, in about two meetings, I remember the switching point was the summer meeting at Brands Hatch in about 2015, yeah. and all of a sudden my wife had become an advocate of Max racing motorcycles yeah. and I was like so, so where the hell has so, that come from so yeah. we, we have a lot of young listeners who want to learn how you did this <laughs> yeah. so if you could tell us exactly how you did well, that would be... I don't I'm not really sure because you were when I was you like really young Alex, you and, uh, well. <laughs> when, it, when it was just like an idea like I just said I wanted to do it but re didn't really put anything into action like that's when dad was like oh yeah you can do it like you're thinking it's not going to happen but like yeah and then mum was the opposite like no it's not happening and then uh Obviously, where Dad was so busy with the team one day, I thought this really isn't going to start unless I, I've got to do something. So I had a, <laughs> I put my foot there, was a there was a mechanic, good friend of yours from years ago, called Kevin, um, Kevin Wyatt, and he uh, was he's really into the Moto Freeze. He was working there at the time at BSB. Um, and How we you doing, Kev? <laughs> <laughs> and we, yeah, we got on really well, and uh, and so yeah, when I was I think thirteen at the time, I, I thought he's my way in. So I, I went up to Kev, and he because he loved Moto Threes, he was like he really wanted me on one of them. And obviously I'm quite tall, even at, for my age at the time I was quite tall. So we, you know, we all knew that wasn't really the, the right route to go down. But I thought if I at least say to him, like, I want to race, like help me with what to do, he'll he'll start the process. And so he, he did and had eventually had a he proper very conversation. Clever. He basically said, we if we're going to work your dad over, we need to work your mum over first. Because he probably so recognised that I would use her as really? a, a sort of portal call, roadblock. a barrier, you yeah. know, a roadblock. But no, they... they they did. And they then, did a good. Did yeah. a good job. So Mum kind of took the approach of if you know if he re if that's what he wants to do, it's hard to say no to stop him. And then that's when Dad turned around and was like, "No, nah, he's not. He's not, do <laughs> he's not doing it. I don't want it." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Max, Max, I don't want to inflate your ego, but can I just say you've got a very bright future if you can manipulate your parents really comfortably well, at yeah, thirteen yeah. year old. Well, yeah. Congratulations, mate. Thank you've you. got a very bright future ahead of you. Whatever you do, yeah, it's gone downhill from there. So. <laughs> Bosses, boards, anything you'll be doing in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, speaking of your dad racing uh, earlier, before this podcast, I always like say go on Google and try, you know try and find a little bit out about the guests. And I'm obviously very familiar with you um, as a team owner, boss, and like throughout the last sort of ten years and or even longer in BSB. Um, but and I wasn't aware of it, that you raced yourself, and obviously I found I, you used to race in World Endurance. Was it? Yeah, I did. I did about um, just over a, a full season in World Endurance. Um, Really enjoyed it. Rode for a private team. We were a bit underfunded. Um, it was called GB Moto, actually. I nicked the name. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and I've uh, been flouting it about ever since. And uh, yeah, had a really good time. So mm. Was that born from sort of track days or was it a family thing originally? No, I, I raced. Um, I actually raced. I uh, started racing when I was 19, uh, which was 87. And I raced a couple of years on Prodi 350s, power valves and stuff. Uh, sadly, I started a, a year after the rise of uh, a certain Mr. Terry Reimer in that class, actually, at club level. It was a good, a, a good buddy of mine now. Mm. And um, so I raced little two strokes in production class for a couple of years, then got onto a 600 and raced in, uh, did clubbies, won a load of club races, and then thought, hey, I'll go British. I'm quick star, I'm quick learner. And then, you know, got my ass handed to me straight away like you do. Um, but the year, the, the final year then, I was racing with kind of Reynolds on a Kawasaki, uh, Simpson, uh, Jim Moody, Sean Emmett, all those boys. And uh, I would say the best I'd got to was kind of a regular lower point scorer. Mm. So it was kind of the equivalent of um, Super Sport then. 
Christ. And I was just scoring, scrapping a few points together. And, and then you decided to do World Endurance after that, was it? Yeah, I, th- I, th- I, th- I thought, um, I suppose a commercial thing comes into this. I thought like being reasonably fast and reasonably savvy, but not having a lot of money, would actually be make me a sponsor's um, dream. Of course, that's sadly not the case. Sadly not the case. Normally, it's the people who are looking good and putting themselves out there that attract more sponsorship or support. The, the, the corporate side of things on that. Yeah. Place. So um, and it, so I had to stop. My, my main sponsor pulled out and I stopped. And there's a thousand races that have been through that, of course. And um, and then a little while later, I met some friends who said, do you want to do some endurance racing? And initially, we did uh, a couple of years in the UK endurance thing, which was brilliant then. It was fantastic. One bike, you know, three riders, six, eight hour races. Proper endurance racing yeah, with one bike. Yeah. And then I went off and did some world stuff and that got, really enjoyed it. Did okay. Uh, scored some world championship points and then, but that's like a week at a time. I was always busy with work and I, that was a week away at a time. 25 people on the road. It's like a big gig. Mm-hmm. And uh, what, what were you doing for a career at that point then? Um, I was in uh, financial services. So I was kind of like in insurance, uh, investments, mortgage products, life insurance, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, yeah. um, I'll just have to close, uh, close your case on Friday. I'm off to ride a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, it's I'll a come bit your like life that, yeah. policy on. <laughs> a bit like that, yeah. <laughs> it must be, you know, That's especially incredible. in that industry and in like you competing against the very best and like driven so to have to sort of balance a sort of double life must have been incredibly difficult yeah but you're all doing it everyone's doing it and not to the same extent as a, yeah. like a high pressure job in the city though it's, it yeah that was that was a bit later i got into the money markets into foreign exchange markets and uh, i met a great guy there and uh, we became partners and started a business 2001 and uh and that was that became very uh, fantastic fun fantastically successful but very hard work mm-hmm. uh, but it was then that later on past all my all my racing stuff uh, I, just start, I stopped in 2008 I think um, we uh, so you started that particular business in 2001 and you carried on racing seven years yeah, yeah. as well as that high pressure so yeah, right? yeah. fair play yeah. mate yeah, but <laughs> I, I'm not being funny that doesn't mark me out as special in our paddle everybody is balancing a lot. balancing mm-hmm. exactly the same stuff I mean because yeah, they are. They are. Yeah. You know, you got trades people that are going to work for thirteen hours, fourteen hours a day, to to to, to get a set of tires to race on on a mm-hmm. uh, practice on on Friday. I mean, come on, it's the way so, it is. Speaking of the world endurance scene as well, I, I'm aware that uh, the the rec- the one that's on this weekend, the UK is actually being sort of kept like the UK teams weren't able to compete. Uh, I was mm. speaking to Captain Kawasaki about aye, the, the, it. And the French are throwing up the flag. The base, <laughs> basic, <laughs> yeah, oh, so basic, basic, basically... Um, well, I saw the ADSS boys today, and I wondered why they weren't there. Yes, so basically they got a phone call um, maybe like a week ago, or more than a week ago, and so the, the plan had it all planned out, and uh, there was a change to the rules to do with the uh, COVID situation. And they basically had to be in France for the following day, otherwise they weren't allowed to and go. That was a week before the event, wasn't it? Yeah. So and it would have it would have basically just made it impossible. They would have had to have like two or three weeks over there. There were all the quarantine and stuff. It just basically made it impossible. And um, also, Jackroyd's team, I think it's is a it Team GB. Yeah. Or yeah, whatever. yeah so they, so yeah, I think it's just the UK teams though that were under those sort of Brexit. Route. So yeah, it's um, a France a c'est merde. Oh, that, was, that was smooth. I don't know I don't what you said, that. but that was that, that was nice. What, what does it, what does that translate? He's not going to translate. He doesn't, on the show. <laughs> he doesn't know. The, the French is shit. Right. <laughs> but a funny story actually. Going back to riding the world endurance, we we um, it's a series, uh, uh, very much so, best supported by the French and probably most populated in terms of teams and riders by the French. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my involvement in it, brief involvement in it. It's a fantastic part of our sport, actually, and um, they, uh, they. It was it was um, governed and ruled, and uh, the rules were applied by the French. Oh my God, what cheats! <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! Let me uh, check your postcard. Yeah, now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, English. At the time, we were riding in super, uh, stu- the super stock class, super stock thousand class, which is different to well, not dissimilar spec to the bikes you, yeah. you guys are riding, and. Uh, and then there was a superbike class, and uh, a lot of the big teams, factory teams, had actually gone to the superstock class. And you're just queuing up in in technical, the technical scrutineering line, and you're looking at these bikes, you're going, "That's not, that's not a standard linkage." 
That's, that's definitely not. Excuse me, that's not standard linkage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's French to me. There's so much politics yeah, involved blah, blah, blah. in all of it. All so of it the made, made you smile. Made mm, you smile. I bet. And, uh, and do you think that sort of the love of the endurance racing from yourself is translated over? Because I, I do a lot of the testing at the No Limits rounds. And yeah. obviously, they run a fantastic. Um, endurance series and uh, we always seem to like sh either share a garage or be the garage yeah, next door or whatever yeah. and you, you had some good success there last year as well on the 600 didn't you yeah we th I'd, well I'll let you take over the lads finished second and we sort of pulled together again I suppose the dad and lad teams come to the fore we rode with Elliot Lodge and his parents really came along and, and got involved and then a really good friend of mine Kevin the guy we shout out his son Casey who I've supported in the past and uh, we had a fantastic, we had a lot of fun, didn't we? Yeah, it was really good, really it's, enjoyable. And the um, the team is it's sponsored by Race Bikes, which is a, is that a business that you set up a few yeah. years ago? Talk, yeah, give it give it a little plug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if people listening, so yeah. it's a perfect audience. So um, I'm really pleased with it, and still a bit bewildered by it. I, I had a load of stuff to. I, the, the real story was I had a load of stuff to sell when I stopped racing in British Superbikes in 2016 and started advertising it in various places and I just thought this is crazy like there should be a place that everyone knows and therefore most people go to buy and sell race bikes and spares and and transporters and trailers and you know all the whatnot and the paddock gear and garage kit so I set one up um, to be honest you got sidetracked I, I started I set one up um, called racebikes.com and I started to slowly push it um, I sold quite a lot of my stuff through it which is pretty good uh, but not all and then um, I got sidetracked by some other projects I was on and then recently Max and myself because he's been working as a digital marketing executive uh, partly on racebikes.com <laughs> Like like you do. That's a canny yeah, job title. This is a big name. Yeah, it's a big title. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that complicated. <laughs> it sounds good though. Yeah, it does sound good. <laughs> it sounds uh, hellish to be fair. So and, and, so <laughs> we, we just started pushing it again, and slowly but surely it is coming together. There's two good things are, if you contact the seller, it's a private thing, so there's no keyboard warrior saying, "What twenty thousand quid? You could buy that in Korea for like five <laughs> five p." You know that nonsense. Yeah. Trashing your ad, trashing your product or your advert. And the the other thing about it is, in eBay's tremendously successful, but it still has the stigma of an auction site. Yes. So when you're putting a, a fantastically turned out two year old super stock bike on there for fifteen thousand quid, you're still getting people like offering you, you a ER six fifty and eight grand in cash. You know yeah. all that. I'll swap you for a pit bike. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so 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 the, the, yeah, the idea is that it avoids some of that as well. Yeah, and that's raised bikes with a Z, isn't it? Just yeah, so spell it out. R A C E B U Y K Z dot com. Why did I call it that? Because it was the only URL or domain I could get <laughs> anywhere near what I wanted. <laughs> and that um, sounds fancy, though. And I yeah. mean, the the team, it, it, you know, looks dead professional. The you know, like properly presented as you would expect from yourselves. And uh, did you win the championship last year? No, I believe we came second to JR Performance, the Superstock Boys. Yeah, and yeah, because... Joe Richardson. I hope you're listening. We don't like you or your team. <laughs> <laughs> And just uh, actually, we love you. You're <laughs> brilliant. And just, just this is the psychological game continues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. God, does he mean it? Does he not? Yeah. It? I don't. I don't think we've actually had many people that do the, the injury. So do you want to just give a quick rundown of like how the a race weekend would go like in the endurance? Yeah. So uh, obviously it's with no limits, and as always with no limits racing, you you normally get a track day before, uh, as we was on today, which you use as your your test effectively, free practice. Uh, and then on a Saturday morning, you'll have, it's not very long, I think it's 40 minutes to qualify between three. Three, of you, yeah. Yeah. Got between three, so uh, if it's endurance, yeah. <laughs> um, so trying to get three people out in, in that is actually quite difficult when it comes to it. Um, and then you get a most commonly three hour race in the, in the afternoon. Um, I think they do one six hour a year. Mm -hmm. And maybe I think there's a special eight hour at Brands this year, which will be very cool to take part in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's, it's all over in two days basically, rather than in comparison to you know a three day weekend as, as you'd normally do. And that's mm -hmm. around alongside the, the thousands. The yeah, yeah, it's, it's all in together, four classes. Mm -hmm. Is it, did it also run something like twins or something? Yeah, we ran in twins. Um, when Max came back to racing after a long break, it, you just did one year on the KTM. Yeah, that was it. Him. Yeah, yeah, and then, a year and off. And then started him on twins, which mm -hmm. made sense. So 85 brake horsepower v-twins good way to get going again and mm -hmm. so we ran the twins in the endurance didn't we yeah 
And over the three hour endurance, it's um, you, you each have your individual bikes, so it's it's not um, yeah not sharing yeah. No, no. And so as you come in, it's a quick transponder check, but mm. it's a proper team effort, isn't it? And the yeah. communications key, the well, pit stops. Dad would you know, say it's, it's not proper endurance in in a <laughs> one bike, you know. So, but well, I, th I think we did that once, didn't we? In fact, my first was it my first round? Yeah, with Casey. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We, yeah, we ended up two, with one bike around on the first time. Big pressure for the mechanics that it's oh, like yeah. a TT wheel change, isn't it? Like yeah, yeah. In, in yeah. pit lane. Yeah. And uh, what, I mean, it must throw up a lot of, you know, like changing weather and stuff like that. What's your, uh, what's been your most uh, sort of hectic race in terms of like unpredictable cra like crashes? It's got to be that Cadwell, surely, with all three bikes, like, yeah, so, down the bin. So, so, <laughs> so the first guy went out in this 40 minute session, got going real good, set a good, good, good time for us, and then, yeah, great. And then he said, oh, you know, I don't know about this. I said, look, so I put some preload on the back and put some comp, took some comp off the front to try and achieve what he wanted. I said, you're done now. Get the transponder back. Like, just, just go out for an outlap and just, and one flyer and just tell me whether it's better or worse. So he went out, never came back. <laughs> uh, Goose neck. So we said, ran out, ran out to the lovely Claire and all the people to work at No Limits Racing and said like, well, oh, can we get our next guy out? They said, yeah, we'll give you a transponder. Boom. Send that guy out. Hope you're listening earlier. And um, he did the same thing. Did did his kind of like 10, 12 I th minutes. I believe his was a, a, an in-lap just to drop him in that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it so. is 10, 12 minutes. So we hold the in-balled out. Max was going out last. And then um, he uh, got nodded for the in ball to come in and then crashed at Gooseneck. And so they were both standing there together. It's qualifying, yeah. <laughs> so like a few hours before the race. Yeah. yeah. And then, two, I think. And then lunch and then race. And then I ran out to Claire again and said, you've got another transponder. About eight minutes left for Max. Slapped it on his bike. Out he went. Did about two or three laps. Came past us with what appeared to be smoke billowing out the back of his bike. I mean, like I'm like, oh my God, he's off at turn one. That's got to be. Of, wasn't off at turn one. Eventually came back in the pit lane and the uh, tracks covered in oil. No, <laughs> no. One, oh. one of the lads. Well, it's lucky I did get back. To be honest, isn't it? One of the lads had left a spacer out the back of the uh, sprocket carrier, and someone had cranked the um, axle up, and it was just grinding itself to death. So what actually happened was that bike was welded. The whole back wheel was welded to the uh, swing arm, and the other two bikes were beat to shit. So we just made one good one out of the lot, and they raced on that. Where did it, where did you finish up after that? After a bollock and oh, it was a like, podium. It, it was uh, third, maybe. Yeah, third. Or yeah. yeah, fair play, lads. In the six hundreds, I believe as well. We yeah. were on the twins. Uh, the first year, they didn't have a twins class, so mm. we were constantly battling with the the six hundred classes, the yeah. national sixes. So I think it was a, a third in that. Yeah. Okay. I tell you what, I must ask before I forget. What, why the year gap then? You know when you were uh, talking about so, your KTM, you so had yeah, a year. So yeah, uh, 2016 was the KTM, and then I was at school and had my GCSEs, and Dad turned around and said, you're not doing it because you've got to focus on school. And I, obviously I was like, It wasn't really? quite like that. It I, was, <laughs> that's how I remember it. If you, if you, if you don't it. study well, I'm going to stop you racing motorbikes. And, and obviously I well. carried on studying mm. really hard. <laughs> Good. I'd actually do like, <laughs> I actually did a, re a similar <laughs> thing with um, when, so when I, the year after I won the Triumph Triple Challenge, I uh, had my A-levels and I, I took pretty much a year out. I ended up doing like three races, but uh, and when I think about it, you know, I was I was carrying quite a lot of momentum at the time and mm. it, you woulda, shoulda, coulda, uh, like mm. you can never look back and, you know, change things. But um, obviously I'd, I'm, I'm a big believer that, you know, it's you've got to have other things and um, it's sort of, it's a very, it's a very risky business to put all your eggs in one basket, isn't it? Yeah, especially it's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Especially with a sport like ours, where you know, as as the pot on your foot can, can, can yeah. say, it's a dangerous I've, game, isn't it? Yeah, and anything it is, can yeah. anything can happen. And now that we're talking about the pot on the foot, let's yeah. talk about the pot on the foot. <laughs> what, what, what happened here, son? Uh, just a just a small off at Cadwell, uh, round three at No Limits. Small off? Uh, you grinded you know your teeth it, when you said that. Uh, bit. Yeah, you were like that. No, it, it was off, it was embarrassingly slow. Honestly, I, I think I was probably travelling about. 15, 10 mile an hour when I went down. I was uh, I, I, I was pushed off to the track or helped along onto the grass, let's say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is the most political <laughs> answer I've ever seen. I got punted off a track. Uh, yeah, uh, and I, got, I got escorted to the side. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Just into the left at the bottom of the mountain. Obviously, anyone that's ridden it will know there's, there's not a lot you can do there. No. Um, to wet grass as well, which is always great. Um, and my aim was really to, to, you know, keep it upright and aim at the mountain. 
uh, and hope that if see I can if just you could get, get him. Yeah, yeah, see if I can, yeah. No, <laughs> this is not over. <laughs> my, my aim was to try and get one or two wheels on the tarmac and then give it a hard right turn, you know, because obviously there's still people coming, but I thought, oh, I don't want to go down here, I'd rather get on and up. So I, I actually got my front wheel onto the track and I thought, oh, I've done it, like, this is wicked. <laughs> and then the, the back just came round and my foot <laughs> was in a pretty nasty position. Straight away it was, it was doing the old clicking and I just thought, oh, you're joking. So, so what, what damage is it? Obviously well, you've got, you so, got one of these space boots on. Yeah. Is there anything broken? Anything? Yes, yeah, so they broke the outside of the, the ankle. So you know you've got, like, the ball on the outside. It's, like, split, really. Which, to be honest, is better than any other part because it's not very movement based if you know what I mean it's, mm. it stays in that position you know you know what I love about being a motorcycle race and you've got this nailed already it's the fact that every injury is not that bad is it you <laughs> no. know what I mean you break your arm gun, but that was the good bone to break in your arm yeah it's it like, was, it was. You, you've still fundamentally yeah. broken your arm Tell me your dad's testament he's like I know. <laughs> that leg's alright that's it that's alright yeah, I, never, I never liked that leg yeah, anyway right, slowed right. me down yeah. right yeah. foot as well so yeah. you know not the gear foot which is, is <laughs> you good. see what I mean like, yeah. everyday life it was terrible it was horrible couldn't drive a car it was like you know it's a nightmare but racing time it's, great. It's, it's, it's a great testament to the way um that you uh, people react in our sport um max has off his own back has done the same it's like i slowed him down from doing too much in the first couple of weeks we went to the hyperbaric chamber two or three times he phoned the hospital had it x-rayed again then they said he could walk in his boot which is obviously a good thing because you send me weight load in and then we've kind of had him spinning on a bike with no um tension or pressure on on, on the spinner and kind of like just get it moving again and it just shows you I mean most people break their ankle and like slope around for eight weeks don't they and kind of tell everybody in the world about it but motorcyclists don't do that just get on with it mm-hmm. and it's it looks from what you've what I've seen today it looks like pretty much meant yeah well yeah it, it felt great to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. a lot better than I anticipated so yeah it was good have you, have you been the crop before was this around uh, last year is that no it, it wasn't around last year it was the year before so two years ago we came here and I think we was on the twins yeah we were right we was on the twins so I, I had briefly done it um but I mean that was a wet weekend as well so I wasn't I'm that familiar with the track I was about to say because you'll remember this forever because it never sunshine in Darling yeah really, so well, it's like you know yeah, one, it's once, been in, lovely. once in a lifetime <laughs> mate people have begged for that so well done yeah <laughs> I've seen some people walking about in their uh, underwear today maybe that's, <laughs> that's that... just the locals to be fair yeah. it doesn't matter if it's sunshine or not that's just the locals <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, so I don't want to be like googling John. I'm going there like that no, straight away. No, we'll, we'll kind of got to um, the f- end of you riding yourself, yeah. and then as as highly unsuccessful period of my life. If, <laughs> as everyone will be aware who's listening, uh, I wouldn't of you, say that at all. You did world endurance. That's outstanding. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's sort of team management and owner yeah. um, sort of period at BSB. So I guess what the first thing is, what was what inspired you to initially set up a, a race team? Um, I was working hard and uh, I thought when I get out of here one day what I'd really like if I make some money what I'd really like to do is run a team start a team and uh, spend some time energy and not so much money although that's how it always transpires uh, doing that Mm -hmm. and then some years went by when I was thinking like that and uh, and I thought to myself hold on this is plans a bit flawed Um, because you don't want to start when you finish you probably want to pick up something that you've already started and it's got a little bit of momentum so I started in so I thought right well let's start um, and uh, started with a super stock thousand team we ran uh, two riders on Hondas in 2011 uh, we literally did what everybody does you know bought trucks slapped an awning on the side of it you know, went and got some sponsors or some suppliers and spons- small sponsors and Signed some riders and uh, signed up Tristan Palmer and Dave Johnson, the Aussie Dave Davo Johnson, and um, we did good. Mm-hmm. Um, we what, ran. What, yeah. what made you go down the stock thousand route straight off the bat? Was it just the cost? Was it like thing and similar thing to run? What was your idea behind stock thousand? I just thought that it was stable. I knew the bikes because I've raced thousands myself. Right. Um, I kind of knew that it would be foolish to jump straight in the super bikes with no experience. Um, and it seemed like I suppose a good compromise mm-hmm. um, and I think it was it was brilliant um, we we had a really good year um, I think Trish won, won four races which is a great way to start in the British Championships and uh, we got called cheating which is uh, uh, I have to I'd like to thank my engine builder for <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, was what, that what? were you aware of was that done sort of underhand 
to not to your knowledge or was yeah it? It, i mean genuinely it was it was it was a it was the most crazy thing um uh it was a, a kit base gasket that was found in our engines now thinner gasket to put the compression up yeah i suppose so but i didn't know about it and and uh and um it was a bitter pill to swallow um and an unprecedented thing that has never i believe certainly hadn't happened before then and I believe has never ever happened again. Um, we were fined 50 points for the indiscretion, and I would have said without that, uh, Trish would have won the championship with us. Uh, well, would have. Uh, the you know, statistics would say that with a fair win, based yeah. on what happened before and what happened afterwards, we'd have won the championship. But um, like most things, you live and learn, don't you? So obviously, we made sure that <laughs> we never we never found ourselves in that situation again. I was, about, I was about to say because, like, speaking bluntly, it, it's yeah. quite a, that reputation. Yeah. It's like even though it was not your fault, someone else put you in that situation. But shaking that. Well, l- listen, you have to take responsibility for yes your what you know what you do in life, and uh, and um, we you know we train we transgress the rules. Uh, we got absolutely clobbered for it. I still don't understand to this day why that decision was taken. Well, I do actually, um, because it knocked a load of noses out of joint. Yes. And the pressure from those people, uh, I firmly believe, ended in that in that penalty being applied. But nevertheless, um, uh, we we transgressed and we got punished for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, humbling. I remember sitting in. Uh, uh, after the meeting uh, and having to go down and tell the team what had just been metered out and that was a low, low point for me. Mm. Uh, and I always remember Tristan actually as a rider that was, you you could definitely, um, you, you can imagine me walking in and saying, got some bad news boys, they're taking two race wins off here. Um, mid-season, that's, that's not a good place to be. Yeah. For, for for as 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 a sports person, you know. So, like from that point onwards, like yeah. from you managing them, yeah, you know, it's a case of how did how did they react to that? Were they pissed off? Were they more fired up to like you know on legit like? Oh, yeah, I th- I think I think we all took we all t- it took us like a, a meeting or so to lick our wounds a little bit. But, yes, um, yeah. We we actually all got together and said we we were pretty undeterred, and Good. how we how we performed after that was pretty much how we'd performed before it. And uh, you know we had we made a vendetta that we were gonna we felt we recognised who was responsible for creating uh, um, situation situation and we vowed that they would not beat us yeah. again that season and they didn't so uh, I don't know whether we got that call right or wrong but anyway it motivated us to yeah. Yeah, to finish it. the season as strongly as we'd can I, can I just ask Ed, yeah. do you know that the whole uh, procedure from the, the organisers taking 50 points off is that all done in house in terms of in BSB or is it taken to like a, a le- like is it a legal court of the League of Gentlemen like, yeah <laughs> on that occasion um, I, I certainly had the option to take it to some higher appeal um, yeah. which would have stepped I think slightly outside of the championship but to be f- honest, it was it was quite clear at that stage that it, that was probably pretty futile, and um, it, it was it was this is the punishment, and if you want to be here, that's what it is. Yeah. So, um, but listen, I don't. I, don't, I we had, we had to, that was the start of a fantastic chapter yeah. in uh, oh, God, British Superbike. So, I've probably sort of started on a low light. <laughs> no, no, well, it's honestly yeah. it's sort of racing yeah. up and down, and, yeah. and uh, I've. Throughout your time as a as a team owner, I've read lots of interviews, like at different at various stages, and t- there's kind of two things that really stand out. One is that you you're very honest in terms of ups and downs. A lot of the time, when you speak to like for example after a test, everyone you can guarantee everyone's had a really positive test. They've tried lots of things and found some really <laughs> where, a, the a, boring where script, an interview yeah, with you yeah. it, it, you you do get like genuinely what's happened. And the other thing is um, in terms of finances. Uh, you've been incredibly open about the sort of cost of of racing, and um, that's something that, for various reasons, people keep 
a closed lid on in in general mm. but uh, i remember reading a, a john hogan interview in superbike magazine and it was talking about that first yeah, year that's and, right, yeah. and like how how you'd sort of budgeted in your mind and how how it had escalated like yeah. way higher yeah but uh one thing that really st- stood out throughout th- throughout that interview is the the determination of like setting goals and no matter literally no matter what happening like yeah. getting there and, yeah. d- and ticking it off and uh, at, at, Rather than just going through that interview, I'll I'll put the link to that interview for people that are, would like to read it. But I, I remember that first year you'd kind of but it was something like budgeted around two two hundred and fifty thousand, and it ended up being like three hundred and seventy five. Yeah. Does that does yeah. sound about right? Yeah. And, I uh, bet your accountant was sweating. <laughs> <laughs> that was just Dave Johnson's bar bill. <laughs> <laughs> what was we must talk about Dave? What yeah. what was he like to work with? Then? Well, come on, he's Dave. I'll tell you a few funny stories. That's what this is all about. God sure. lad, God lad. So. Um, he, he. I love Davo. Uh, he, I, I, I'd like to think that he and I are good buddies. Um, but um, he rode for us for six rounds, uh, or six or seven rounds of that year, and then I sacked him because <laughs> he was too fat. <laughs> really? Yeah. As in, did you, you say you need to be you need to be this weight by this was round, it? and he just wasn't. Well, it, well, it, <laughs> wasn't there a thing with batteries? Is that a, huh? it, with the with the scales? No. Yeah. Is that yeah. A, yeah, yeah. So, so, ba- <laughs> so basically, so basically, uh, he kept telling me that he was. I mean, Dave was a great rider. I love him, and uh, there's nothing unprofessional about Dave. He, yeah, you know, we get on but he does a good. He does a job, and uh, he was actually riding quite well. Uh, and I was pleased with that. But he wasn't the fittest guy, and uh, he knew that I knew that. And he, we had an agreement that he could live his life, do what he needed to do, but he needed to be a certain weight. I, off the top of my head, I think it was 80 kilos. So not unrealistic. No, it was it was eighty kilos. Might have even been eighty five. Can't remember, but it was not unrealistic. Certainly not for him. He's not like six foot four. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not Dave Jeffries. You know, and, yeah, it, and, it, and was it a case of just throughout the season it wasn't happening? No, so no. Well, he kept play. telling me he was, but then we got the scales out, and he wasn't. So, and then I said to him, "Well, you've got X amount of time to sort this out." And mm-hmm. then he's and he didn't. I think you put on weight. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dave. I lo- I, you know I love you, Dave. You he's stress eating without knowing it. It's yeah. like looking at the scales eating a McDonald's. Going, oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever watch the? It might have even been like around that sort of around that sort of time when he was on uh, first. There's a program on Channel Four called First Dates. Have you no, seen this? Have you seen that? That is yeah, so hilarious. We had him on the show, and then it ended up getting reposted. Didn't on Facebook and Mike mm. honestly you'll have to put like Grace who does the editing is going to be so so busy with this like yeah, the yeah, link yeah. drops but you have to watch it's it it's basically it's, like a family of actors yeah. and hidden cameras and it, it, yeah it's a, it's a must watch do you know what I regret that though do you yeah I do regret it um, because um, A he's a good writer B he's a good guy and do you know what the only difference it made to us was that it meant that Dave didn't have a ride at that point in his career and I uh yeah, I think if I if I went back now, I'd I'd have just like beasted him a bit more and said, "Come on, mate, I'm gonna you're pissing me off. Like, mm-hmm. sort this out." So I kind of yeah, I don't regret. No, I don't regret it. But if I went back and did it, had my time again, I wouldn't have taken that decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, no, fair and do, enough. Do you, think, no, no. do you think that's maybe um, a sort of that split life, like the corporate city world and like ruthless, yeah, I think so. and then coming into the race and then maybe like crossing over a yeah, little bit? I do think that, yeah. So, like, that's speak- not, I'm not making an excuse for no, myself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, that's it. No, but like, I don't, I don't know Davo to the level you know Davo. Mm. I, I know Mr. Happy Adelaide lad who just yeah. makes it put a smile on your face. But, uh, like, you know, when that happened, being in the panic, what, what, what was your relationship like? Could you pick up the phone room now, or was it, was it oh, kind I'm, of a, oh, no, it's yeah. interesting that. Yeah, he was, you know, to be honest with you, um, <laughs> if I remember the actual incident, he came into my motor home and we had this conversation and they, they kind of got re- pretty emotional. And he started crying, and then I started crying. <laughs> so it was exactly kind of like, uh, I don't know, Wolf of Wall Street, really. It was kind of, it was a bit, um, yeah, it was, but like I say, um, I felt like I was taking the right decision at the time. Yeah. Um, but like I said, if I, if I. And he knew that as well. He had a, he yeah, had a task to do, and, that, yeah. that's, and he's still a professional around. Right? We get him great. I've seen him loads and loads of uh, times since, and um, our relationship, I think. 
I think he would have looked back on that. I think he'd look back at it now and go, it was it was possibly a good kick up the arse for him, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Was it six months later, he's sending you six pack uh, pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Training in the yeah. gym. Yeah. Mr. You're Australian. Like that. Yeah. But, and another thing, um, you, you were originally set to do two years in Superstock, but then they opened up the Evo class and it was kind of the that yeah, perfect I opportunity that, yeah. to, to go on up to Superbikes. Yeah. But on the, the rules that kind of we've got now without the, the very expensive electronics. Yeah, that's right. And um, was it you stayed with Honda as well for, for that initial initial period? And did you stay with Tristan? Yeah, we 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 went uh, f- first year in Superbikes, kept stayed on with Tris, um, and uh, had Luke quickly as well. Mm-hmm. So um, and uh, again, looking back, we did we did our very best to build a, a top class bike. Um, it wasn't for lack of money that or and and real kind of effort that we. We, we fell a bit short with the front runners it was lack of experience mm-hmm. and um and uh i'd have to say about that period we did oh we had a actually we didn't do that well we had a really really average year mm-hmm. um and um i think that which is amazing because the first round trish qualified on the front row of kind of damp brands acts and i thought this is just, <laughs> here we go, here we go, Paul Bird, move over, I'm coming through, uh, all that stuff. And um, and I don't think we scored another point, point for again. about seven meetings or something. So um, uh, It's a tough sport, isn't it? Yeah, it's really tough. And um, yeah, so, it, but it was, that was the reason, Chris, that we that we went up. They were, they, they were taking away the electronics. I remember people like Sean, Sean Muir and stuff, people like that were pretty angry because they'd spent so much, much money on their electronic kit and I, and I get that um, but for us it was a good opportunity mm-hmm. and for the series in general I think it's it's opened it up massively and like sure. f- right now the rules you know pretty much any manufacturer and any team yeah. uh, private or factory supported has a chance of winning race. if you get your bike well set up and your riders on form uh, it, it is much more open than it used to be oh, I guess so be, being a Honda team at that point when was the I know you as the Kawasaki team you know it's like when did that transaction happen so with that was 2012 and then 2013 we stayed in Honda so third year we Honda but second year in Superbikes it was going nowhere um, in hindsight again you live and learn you know you've got Lauf Honda the Samsung Hondas as they were then you had Pagets who are an institution um, you had WFR which were a big team for a good number of years uh, and they were paying a plough a massive budget into their racing so I guess if you look back we were like fourth best the run the run to end it on the kind of super bike paddock and didn't get a lot of help didn't yeah. get any help didn't get any support and couldn't get access any kind of semi-factory parts and so we ran with 2013 with uh, Dan Limfoot and Peter Hickman that was the first time we worked with Peter mm-hmm. and uh, we were just um, by then the bikes were the bikes chassis wise and electronics wise and the team infrastructure was pretty damn good um but we were just underpowered was it was it that year that did Tyco come in at the end of that year and sponsor your team i remember like a chrome bike at one point of a chrome no that was pete was on um uh, another honda i just he, remember he, him flipping it he, yeah, yeah. Was that he, he, he did flip it yeah. he, he pulled a no, wheelie down the back road for bands. ian can't remember the name of the team they were in the southwest. Right. I, I remember him. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, end, it'll end up popping in the it head. Was on yeah. like, it was on like a warm down lap or something, or a, a victory <laughs> lap. And he it tried to pull a wheelie down the back straight and, and, flipped, um, it. and flipped it and just absolutely. Because they did like a special one off, a chrome a Tyco, t- Honda, Tyco Honda. Yeah. And it just absolutely <laughs> obliterated. No, 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 it's like massive. It wrote it off, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. I guess oh that wasn't God. I guess that wasn't the inspiration that for us a, a <laughs> sign in for that. <laughs> Although he did ride for us the next year. Yeah. And that turned out to be, you know, I just realised at that point he was fully committed. <laughs> <laughs> He's my kind of That's guy. Exactly I want what we it. Need. I want <laughs> it. Do you, know many, yeah. do, you know, do you know how many Max's mates and everybody yeah. like I can't like I can't. You get a nice bike, son. You flip it. Wait yeah. to be yeah. a speed round one. That's you're going to yeah. see some impressive yeah. stuff. That's exactly yeah. it. Wherever you start from, you're going to be up there with turn one, right, son? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No breaks. Were you, were you involved with the race team? I know you'll have been much younger, but did you have no, any involvement? I, I was like the annoying little kid running around, really, um, just. You know, really pleased to be in that kind of environment, which was really cool. Um, getting brought back to the motorhome by Gareth or Jane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting told off and stuff. No, but no, no, no real, 
involvement to be honest just having to listen to dad's you know, you know stressful conversations and stuff on the way home from a race meeting but uh-huh. that's about it really yeah. and was that, <laughs> yeah, was that, that a deterrent you at any point because you can imagine the stress you know like oh. like and everything like that did you just think bloody hell you know this there is was, dad's well, when, thing obviously like, when you know, you're younger there was a bit like w- w- why are you doing this yes, like, so. all I can see is like sitting like I don't know six hours from Cadwell back to home and it's just like non-stop phone call of like Shouting down the phone because you're angry about something, and I'm just sitting. Lose weight, like, devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm just sitting there. Like, I love yeah. you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, just, just wondering if I'm this is really. Massively overcompensating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, transition from Honda to Kawasaki proved to be a very uh, good move from that respect. And you, the in terms of the professionalism of the team, there was also a massive step up. Yeah. I think I think I I, t- I need to uh, shout out Chris Walker here because um, I didn't I didn't know Chris Walker at the time, and uh, he who is it who put me in touch with him? Um, somebody put me in touch Chris in touch with me, and he said, uh, oh, you know you've been noticed and you're kind of doing good stuff and what do you think about you know coming to Kawasaki? And I was a bit like, well, I'm cheesed off with Hondas and um, I. Yeah, that might be a good thing. And I was in Spain. We got a place in Spain. I was out there at the time. I remember the conversation really vividly. And um, he said, "Listen, I'd like to try and make that happen, but would you include me in that?" And I said, "Yeah, I possibly would. Yeah." And he said, "It doesn't have to be me, but I'd like to think that if I can kind of put you in touch with the right people and you and that and those conversations go well, that you'd think of me." So. And it, and it was not much more than that, and I kind of and then I started to speak to the Kawasaki UK guys um, at the time, the lead and still is the lead man's Ross Burridge, and and I spoke to a lot of people, all of the people at Kawasaki UK, and um, it was a little bit controversial because uh, as was latterly the case again, Peter Bournemouth was um, running the team at that time, and um, who was he running at that time on the track? You know, I don't. Oh, I tell you, who's running? He was running Dan Limfoot. He's, he was actually running Dan Limfoot on a Kawasaki, and a, and and Howie Mainwaring. That's that who was he was it. running. Yeah. Was that the is it pre, uh, Primo or something? Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, Primo Kawasaki, mm-hmm. Bo- Primo Bournemouth Kawasaki, I think. Yeah, they one, were. Yeah. And um, and the way things turned out after I spoke to him was that they agreed that, that I would get the we would get the BSB deal and that Pete would keep the roads deal. And um, uh, Peter Bournemouth would keep the road still. So, so that was a straight into being the, like the f- sort of factory supported car. It was, yeah. Oh, fantastic. And then I signed James Ellison, who I'd been after for a year or two, and uh, Chris Walker. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember the, the start of that season at Brands, it like started brilliantly. Uh, I remember thinking, Chris. Uh, I sort of saw James as a title contender that year, but in my in my head at the time, I was sort of thinking Chris would be more of like a sort of top ten man. Yeah. And they went out and they were both on the podium like straight away. They were, yeah. And uh, like sort of a dream start really to the. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to remember the bike livery. Did you have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle bike? <laughs> we that? did. That was where yeah. that, they look. They had that so Silver much Stone. Cool. Silver Stone. We did it for one round. It was a deal that Kawasaki UK did with the people that were making and marketing the latest. Teen, teenage. Well, Megan Fox in it. So, yeah, it's all coming back now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please tell me you've got their variants in your workshop. Somewhere. I actually have got a couple. God, yeah, honestly, they, 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 yeah. they, they, like, I think I think more teams should. Do. If you if you do yeah. come back to the any yeah. form roads or anything, please yeah. bring that along with you because yeah. like those liveries. Yeah, uh, standout moments. There might be a set on uh, www.racebikes.com. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm loving that. I'm yeah. loving that. Will you take twenty quid? Yeah. <laughs> Not quite. I'll, I'll swap you for a pit bike. <laughs> there you go. You started that uh, eBay stuff again, <laughs> didn't you? That, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so I am. Um, to watch away by David Johnson. I'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just want to say hello to if if they get to listen to this to Chris Walker and uh, James Ellison as well because because they were they were great at that time and they were part of what sort of propelled our team um, into a sort of a, a new era really yeah, and uh, yeah and that, that obviously went you know, really successful you also looked to go to the road racing as well I was just about to ask when mm. did that when what year did that start so we went uh, we went to the TT and we did the Northwest and the TT for the first time in 2015 14. and we did it with Gary Johnson so we rode yes Gary I... rode for us in the super bike and the super stock class um, 
a little bit unlucky in the superbike race. He had a slip off coming. Yeah, up the mountain. The, yeah, on the top of the mountain. He was, he was running sixth then, which Godfrey's. Yeah, just, just the back end just slipped. Yeah. Up. Slow crap, well not slow, yeah. but yeah. He was running sixth for us then, and that would have been a fantastic uh, opening result for us. Um, and then we went back the next year, uh, with in sixteen with Hickey, and uh, he rode the super bike and super stock bike for us, and he was leading the. That was with a new sixteen Kawasaki. And uh, which was a little bit troublesome when it first left the showroom as a race bike, and uh, he broke down in the leaders' super stock race, uh, and then I think we had some fuel ing problems with his super bike, but um, yeah, I I love I loved it. I've been back to the TT um, two or three times since then. I loved. I just loved it. Mm -hmm. So why earlier on? You know, when you first started the team, you know, like yeah. if you. Why did not that road transaction, like uh, transition, happen earlier? If you know what I mean, or was it just, just never budget. just budget? Budget. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you also did the Ulster and the Northwest as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. In, in sixteen, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and um, yeah, I was really upset. We we led, uh, we led the he led the super stock race for us at the Ulster, and had a tire problem, and then I think he was leading the second super stock race, and we had a moat an engine go. Um, I, I remember being really upset at the time. I said to him he needed to go and ride for somebody else because we were letting him down. And uh, at the right. time, at the time we were letting him down because even then he was clearly one of the best road racers um, about. And uh, so he did. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's a very yeah. honest, you know, from a team manager. You know, when you think it, that's a very honest, very, very yeah, honest yeah. approach to it. And fair play to you to say yeah. that you say that to your rider. Yeah. To, and, uh, fair play. As well as you know that it do he, he did do well on the roads that year. I know a few yeah. mechanical failures and stuff, but he's still riding yeah. really well. And he was also riding excellent in British Super Bikes mm. that year. And going into that year, I'm uh, right in saying that the the team lineup was sort of sorted with Hickman and Ellison originally yeah. as a two man team. Yeah. And then it transpired that Leon Haslam didn't have a ride in World Superbikes. Yeah. Uh, can you sort of what what's the story behind how it went from two man to three man? Um, so we were settled. We were we'd signed both riders from the same ride. Kept signing two riders. Um, James was in the fight in uh, in fifteen, um, despite having having to been being injured. So we were we were quite confident about our chances but Leon came along and wanted to uh, stay on a Kawasaki at the time uh, or be no sorry be on a Kawasaki at the time and then a conversation transpired and I was just like I want this guy to ride for my team mm -hmm. um, I thought of it to from both ends do I want him to ride for my, our team and how could, good could that be and B if he rides for another team how hard is he going to be a beat so and I figured he'd be pretty hard to beat, um, and he would have been. Yeah. So um, so we just rolled out some extra yards and dug deep and made it a three man team, and that wasn't easy at all, because yeah, you know, from logistics like garages, they're best set up for two people rather than three. Yeah. You know, try that and knock hill and all that stuff and Froxton. <laughs> think about that, mm -hmm. and um, and um, obviously it put a few noses out of joint at the time. And uh, that need to be needed to be dealt with, and obviously it meant the budget was just sailing away. So it was a, it was hard work, but I don't really, I don't I have no regrets. I, I, I used a stupid phrase earlier. I wouldn't change that decision. Yeah. Um. I, by then I was kind of like I wanted to win the championship, and uh, we got bloody close to doing that mm, that year. Mm. Yeah. And uh, also that year actually we won. 50% of the BSB races. I remember that. And, and then the showdown happened. Yeah. That and, was and also running up to that race as well, yeah. a bit of history that we've talked about a few times on the podcast, that uh, that famous race from Oulton Park where yeah. it was a 1-2-3. Yeah. And if you think, like, stats-wise, to to get through like all three riders yeah. on the podium in the same race, um, do you think having Leon in the team helped with uh, the sort of development of the bike and sort of set up, which then helped the other riders? Or is it... No, I don't. Um, I I don't. In fact, to be honest with you, he was quite connected with the KRT team, and he was permanently trying us to get us to run like 
various bits that he thought he could catch from those relationships, which wouldn't have suited like the development of the bike at all. He'll smile if he hears this because he's, he knows it's true. So we had to kind of hold all that back a little bit and um, keep keep doing what we were doing with a new bike. Um, what I do think happened though is I, I think that he, um, rather than kind of it, it being a little bit uh, uh, initially um, difficult mentally for people like James and Peter, particularly James to, to, to kind of buy into, mm -hmm. I think what he did do is he put the bar right up there straight away. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't have said that they rode worse, I'd have said they rode better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, like Dom alluded to in the showdown, uh, was it, was that the year that it went down to the last round and Haslam yeah. had a big lead? Yeah. What, then, well, what what Haslam had a lead? The first round of the three round showdown was at Donington, which is was kind of stupidly termed as like Haslam territory. Mm -hmm. And shaky. Uh, I mean, uh, hello Shane. If you get to listen to this, I'm sure you do. Um, he's one motherfucker competitor to, <laughs> to to beat. He he just is. He just does not like be, beating that man. Uh, that boy at the time I used to think of him, and he is he's a strong competitor. And and I think he was just so determined to try and beat and break Haslam at Donington, and in a way he did. Um, he won the first round, uh, first race of that showdown at Donington, and Leon was trailing him in the second one and lost the front at Redgate. And that and that handed a kind of like I don't know they went into the showdown. Shaky might have had like a twelve point lead, and then he had a thirty seven point lead. Then something fantastic happened. Two fantastic races. We went to Assen for round eleven, second round of the showdown, and Leon beat him fair and square mm -hmm. in a massive dust up in both races. Uh, I remember the night in Groningen after that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I very much remember the night that night, and uh, so does my sponsor Tina from McCams probably. Um, I, I drenched her in a pint of my beer when I got a bit over exuberant and I washed it. Well, yeah, and uh, yeah. and um, and uh, and, uh, and then we went to the the brands the last round, and then um, uh, some it just all conspired to go wrong for us. A handlebar snapped on Haslam on our bike in qualifying which was a Saturday obviously it's a three race weekend he then I think that was unfair on him it put massive pressure on the team to rebuild the bike for the race which was a couple of hours later um, he it was wet he fell off out coming out of Drids on the first lap the opening lap um, and, it, and and we just kind of I think he won a race that weekend last one I think but we just it slipped away and, and Shaky took it so mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but good times. Mm. It, I mean, that the day we did the one, two, three, virtually no teams get to run three guys anyway. But so it's unlikely that everyone, anyone will ever repeat that. And I'm super proud of that fact. And I'm super proud of the not just the free riders actually pulled that off because they were brilliant, um, but the, the the lads and lasses that work for the team now, but they were just the best. Mm -hmm. Have you got that uh, as a picture of big man on your yeah. mantelpiece? Have you? Yeah. No, I'm not surprised. I would as well. But uh, yeah, we're, like I say, we talk about it. We've mentioned it a good few times on the podcast. Yeah. It is a proper bit of history, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, I, I have to say though, a bit of beef with um, Sky Sports or Eurosport, actually Eurosport, because they just washed over it. Yeah, it didn't get any proper recognition at all, mm. at all. It's just like it's up and moved on. It's yeah, like, no, yeah. Sort of they should be ashamed. Opponent. They should be. They're listening. They should be ashamed of themselves <laughs> for the way they did not cover that off properly. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that is fair. That's yeah. totally fair. Yeah. So, so leading into that, like, so let's lead in the championship winning year. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You know, like, can I just say, was there? There was another year where Leon. Came really close, wasn't it? Yeah, so oh, of course, that was the speed is my need. That documentary, have you yeah, seen that but, on Netflix? but that was with Pete's team. I that was I bowed out by then. Of course, bloody hell. Yeah, so that that was all that was all quite good. I mean, the short story there was um, we had a great sponsor, JG Speedfit, and guys, I was notified Kawasaki with a couple of rounds to go that I was going to stop, and um, we kind of tried to make the best deal forever for whatever happened next, and. So he'd managed to, thankfully, to retain the, the sponsorship through JG Speedfit. That was kind of, that went with Pete's team. Leon went with Pete's team. And and um, 
that was all good by me and all good by all good by everyone else. Mm. So why did you decide to bow? Was it just like a tick in the box? Was it what? What? Why? I just became disenchanted with uh, the championship. Right. Uh, um, for a number of reasons, some of most of which, some of which I won't go into. But yeah, I felt um, I was under a lot of. I wouldn't necessarily say. Um, I was just under a huge workload at work. Um, mm. I didn't think it was actually that 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 fair to my family. Um, I realised that the sport was becoming non. I wasn't enjoying the sport anymore. Yeah. Um, not because we lost that year, but because it, it, it's just bloody hard work doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. By comparison, Harvey he works for Honda. I mean, it's his full time job. Yeah. And he does a bloody good job at it. But I had a full time job somewhere else, and that job too. And and there was a few things that we all see a few things going in racing on and some of them didn't line up with my principles yeah. and that was that i said i tell you i tell you what i might i'm going to apologize like bowing out you haven't bowed out at all you've just taken a different no you haven't though have you you know normally some people actually get that sick of the politics shall i put it underline it and go right i'm not yeah. i'm not going near a motorcycle again yeah i take that totally back here you are at croft where you Sitting in a premier car park right now at the moment, but yeah. uh, no, like that you're with my three three day croft circuit band on. <laughs> that's made of, that, that, that's made of oh, paper, gone. so you can't yeah. actually uh, have a shower. You smelly scruff. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, so, right. No, but no, but the fact is, you haven't bowed out. You've just taken a different path. You, you're back here. You're back racing. Yeah. So that which is really important. I'm loving this. And I was going to say it was it was a brilliant uh, thing on the BSB website at the beginning of this year. A picture of you and Nick with your hands <laughs> in your, hands in your your head in your hands. Like it was the almost saying like oh. Oh right. God, what are we doing? Type of thing, but you know, it is it's it's really great and uh, doing it with your son. It'll be a totally different feel to you know mm. in in previous times. But uh, I, I mean, Maxi must be ex like really excited about uh, after all those years of BSB to <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, no, now it's now it's on me. Yeah, no, I am really excited. Um, I I am nervous as well. You know, it's it's a big step up, and I know it's going to be really really tough. Um, but you know, there's no real pressure. We're just gonna go like like it was publicised the whole dad and lad thing. We're just gonna go there, try and have as much fun as possible, and and if I can get a bit faster on the way, then you know, happy days. <laughs> so what's it? Okay, let's um, let's talk about your bucket list. How old are you? Nineteen. Nineteen, right? Your bucket yeah. list must be thousands <laughs> and thousands of yards long. But let's talk about your motorcycle bucket list. What what events? Would you like to do? What 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 your dreams? Where would you like to like start? Where would you like to finish? You know, what, you know what, I've thought about this for a while and, and I don't really have any specific things on my bucket list. I've always just said, like, I want to be able to go as far as I possibly can in, in the whole most motorcycle racing industry whilst having fun because I think it's quite easy to get to a point where, you know, you're, you're going further and further up but you slowly start to perhaps lose the love for the sport or, you know, politics gets involved, something like that. So I just want to be able to get as far as possible whilst maintaining the same level of you know, love and, and passion for the sport, really. Um, and so, yeah, if you can, you know, get as far as possible having, yeah, doing it all, and it's I, good, isn't it? Yeah. I've, I've got to, sorry, I've, I've got to ask this, because I think we're, we're, this this situation would be very hard to replicate and having, like, direct answers. Now, you being a big fan of the TT, <coughs> running TT teams and having that involvement, now, we've got a very strong <laughs> answer from the side here, but, you know, it's a bit like, you know, the yeah. thing is, you you're growing, you're like you're having your own ideas, and you think, you yeah, know, let's yeah, try a few yeah. things. Let's talk in theory. In mm. theory, your mother's got a punch. I've never met you. Yeah. I can, I can <laughs> yeah. see this happening. Yeah. She's got. You know what? I would like to go to the TD. Yeah. What's your thoughts to that? So, Max is a man now. I couldn't stop him doing that, um, and I and I, I wouldn't want him to do it. Um, yeah. I love the TT. I've made some friends that are road racers. Peter's a real good buddy. I'll class him as and. And I know some other guys, Dave Owen, a, a, a few lads. I love it. I respect that. That I, I'm definitely one of those people that have him, having witnessed it and taken part in it a little bit. Really respect it as a part of our sport. Um, I wouldn't want my son to do it because it's just so dangerous. Yeah. Um, that's. But I, I actually understand having just ridden around the circuit myself on some mornings. How off the charts it must be to race there so the high, the, the highs I can I can understand the allure the drug the kind of the ups um, but I wouldn't want him to do it but I couldn't stop him doing it that's, that's my but uh, yeah funnily enough I'm guessing 
that mum would be the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Think, I've yeah, never yeah, met the woman. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I, th- I, I don't think know. she put her foot down on that one. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but it would be down to me. Yeah, uh, have, yeah. have you been to the TT I have, have you? Yeah, so you've, yeah, you've yeah, been I, to watch. I, I think I went two years, maybe. The two years were it. Yeah, I haven't been since, Which, but I loved it, you know. Like like everyone says, it's a great you know atmosphere when you get there. Um but it's never been something that's you know interested me in that way, as it, from a rider's perspective. You see that that that's good, very good news for yeah. you. Very good yeah. news for you. Yeah. But you see the thing, the thing is, like when I went, the, like you know, the yeah. first time I stood there, I went, oh, oh no, nah, th- th- this is for me, and it's well, well, yeah. it should really, it should be that immediate traction. Yeah, you know, if, it, if it's not that, yeah. you shouldn't do it. Yeah, that that's it's, it. You know what yeah. I mean? So no, that's I it. Great I'd, news for you. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd have done it when I. First See, that, that, that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Mm. It's just when you when you have your own kid, you yeah. think, nah, but then it's. I wish I'd have done it. Really? Yeah. As in just to tick it off the bucket list? Or no, no. I, actually I done wish it. I'd have, I think it had. I was never a great rider, I was just a big lump that tried hard. And, but I reckon it would have suited my style. Mm-hmm. And. Um, what? Yeah. What? And, and I, I just. Uh, I just. With a break I had in my race in between, like sprint racing and then doing some endurance, it just never. It kind of came off the radar. Yeah. And um, so just going back to what you were saying about mm. uh, Superstock there, and you know, it, it's sort of enjoying it and whatever. It's I, I feel like so so uh, sort of privileged to have an opportunity to to do it. Like there's literally nothing that, that I've ever experienced in the world that um, comes close to to, yeah. to racing bikes yeah. and to challenge yourself against the best riders in the country in you know in front of big crowds with uh, the best medical. Um, supervision yeah, possible yeah. really mm. um it's you know to have an opportunity to do it and to sort of grab it with both hands and you know to and anything that's like really difficult whether it's sporting or otherwise it, it well I, I i think you get like a sense of satisfaction from mm. like working really hard at something yeah and like sticking at something and, and gradually working your way up and for me looking back i would probably say my best memories was actually working my way through the pack and um like my first year progress yeah my yeah. first year racing like you know i remember turn for example we had two rounds at donnington and like the first time i went there i was like i think i qualified like 25th and then a month later i went back in similar conditions and i'd you know, knocked a second and a half off my time, and I was fifteenth on the grid. And that, that's, that's a great feeling, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, that yeah. is it, it's such a yeah. It, it, most people that are listening to this, are obviously bike fans, and they'll sort of understand it. But yeah, yeah mm-hmm. getting to race, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to sort of see tracking your progress. I think I think it's a I think it's a sport that delivers massively on that front. I I I I've seen in Max. I felt myself go through the gears ahead of my friends when I was racing at a similar age to you now you know they you'd go away and you'd do your first couple of years racing and you were a man you were doing very grown up things and you were pushing yourself mentally more than physically mm-hmm. into the, the, a non-comfortable zone frequently to, to to make your way up up the race order you know and there's a word for that it's called yeah. debt yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, these tyres are expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What can I do to pay for another <laughs> pair of these? That's, that's it. Hold on, grown ups have debt. I yeah. must be a grown up. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I just think that it delivers massively on that front. Yeah. Um, it's almost like an education, it's a yeah. different type of education, but it, it is, is an education yeah. in life. Just two or three years ago, when we just decided you'd, you'd just come back with Racing the Twins, I watched, it was that race we were talking about before, it was a bit of a disaster, but. Um, you went out to hold the bike for Casey to yep, start yep. and then uh, he shot off and then I watched Max walk back in with a couple of fellow racers one was on his left looked about 30 and one was on his right looked about 35 and they were all jibber jabbering like you do helmets in hand you know it's a good, a good luck you know have a great race oh we did this in practice and he was at the time 17 or something yeah 16, 17 yeah. and it, I was just, shit he's a man Mm-hmm. Look at him! Like they think he's a man because they're, they're racing him, but they're going to be racing against him in a, an hour's time. And it was, um, it was all of, and it delivers that stuff. It does and because of the the speed and the danger. It requires such, <laughs> it requires such a level of focus and concentration yeah. that it like it almost fo- uh, like pushes you into you know putting absolutely everything into yeah. it. Yeah, and you uh, have to really, don't you? You yeah. can't. There's no short way around yeah. it. Mm. I think one of my final questions has got to be. 
are you faster than him yet on your lap time? So what, what's going on? Like, oh, it's does it. Have you been on track what, together? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what, da, da, uh, what, no, talk it down. He, he was actually quite fast when he was racing. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so there was there was a period. It was it was a twins really, wasn't it? We we yeah. we had these six fifties, right? So I'd done the KTM and then two years on a six fifty, and on the second year we we kept saying it's like. You've got three of them. Like, you know, put a heavier shock in one of them. Let's, let's go and have a go, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the season, we, we did. And uh, and obviously, I'm, I was there. There's like, you ringing the old crew going, yeah. we're going for a track day. Yeah, Don't I tell was the like, yeah. I wish I'd have done that, Dom. I wish I'd have done that. <laughs> Telemetry. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah, I was I was obviously yeah. going for it. Um, he, just, like, he just rinsed me. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's probably a bit unfair because you were a lot heavier on the, and yeah. as a twin, you know, it's not got that much I bet you were at the tyre place like trying to secretly get super soft tyres <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was it was great it was a really it was a good time it was it was um, I really like these little bikes I, I just wanted to try one and uh, we spent a couple of years developing them and they were great and then so we, I said to him you bugger off on the first yeah, session yeah. I'm going to go and have a wobble round you know so he did and then like second or third session he just turned up like I think we were coming underneath um um, out of old hairpin at Donny and just Red round fast left a left and then back oh Lauren Donny just opened Matt I think someone's at the door is that someone at the door? sounds like it there we go someone's winding up one or the other I think it's the fans have turned up did you say yeah, yeah I heard yeah, yeah, someone yeah. was definitely it wasn't coming from there I think it was coming from there oh, it's it's a it, must be, yeah, it must be bird top <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he just, like, he just that, that'll be my edit and skills yeah. coming in there anyway. <laughs> he just rode off and rinsed me. And it, I was grinning in my helmet, but I couldn't bloody catch him. That's for sure. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, d- you read a similar thing at the TT, haven't you? He, he did a lap of the TT with his dad, imagine that. Really? Oh, did you? Oh, God. Look, no. the full TT? It's on, it's on YouTube. Yeah, we'll we'll be together. Oh, no, we, we, like, uh, I, um, we did it on the lightweight, but I tell you what, the one lap I'll never forget in my life was, um, you know that bike he was on the first yeah. year he got it? Um, Alan Charmley, if you are listening to this uh, big show, he, he spent more money on the paint job of this bike than yeah. standard shocks, standard brake lights. It was absolutely awesome. Yeah. So anyway, I'm waving everyone by. My mother's standing there going, I know exactly what this little... She, she doesn't swear. My mother's an angel, but yeah. in her eyes, she was swearing. Yeah. <laughs> going, I know what he's doing. So yeah. my dad's coming further and further on Grand Country Road, and I'm waving everyone by. Yeah. So there's me on this Suzuki Slappy. <laughs> my dad's on the 750. Honestly, it was just like it was like a Moto GP start. It was just I revved, he went a little louder, I went a little louder, then he went a little louder, and we just dropped the clutch. And there's one line down Bray Hill, and we found two. <laughs> <laughs> we went side by side all the way down, straight over. And I tell you what, I've never seen someone lay brake like it in my life. Quarter bridge. Now, when you hit quarter bridge on a superbike, you just back one, load it up, back on the throttle, and jump. My dad did not shut. Literally straight up back wheel in the air, coming down, lock, 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 I'm going, he's going through the pub here. He stopped, got it turned, fired, looked over the shoulder, went, that's how you do it, my boy, <laughs> and drove off, oh, and I chased, him, like, I chased him the entire lap, and I'm going, this is just surreal. And it, it just, it went from this father-son moment of going, now you're pissing me off here, yeah. so I, I yeah. need to try and do you. And um, Ren Cullen, do you, like, do you know where Ren Cullen is? It's on the mm. far side, you go through Kurt Michael, it's a 30 mile an hour, and you've got Ren Cullen to jump. But then after that, it's a blind right turn that compresses through Bishop's Court. And I mean, on a big bike, you've just got to commit. You've, you've just got to shut your eyes, hold a breath, and hold the line through. There was three R6 newcomers on R6s. We're on classic superbikes. I went on the outside. My dad was on the inside. And there's like, Sandwich. Oh, literally, <laughs> all three of the newcomers came in and went, that was just surreal. And me and him were just not backing off at all. And it was wow. just, it was just the most it sounds incredible. Sounds like a family moment. death race. Oh, yeah. honestly, it was, it was, I, I tell you what, the, my standout moment from, you know, the father-son thing was, um, like, I first went to the Isle of Man, I think my first ever lap. Now, you do your newcomer's lap, and you're, you're in tour, and you think that's your first lap. It's bollocks. That is not your first lap. When you're out with all the other psychopaths going over the mountain, I remember coming over, and the sun was setting, and it was coming in dark, and I'm thinking, this is, this is what it's like to be on the Isle of Man. And I came home. It was the best lap of my life. Mm. Re- regard- not, no one could tell me otherwise but the worst thing about the Isle of Man and it's like any short circuit you can go for your lap can't you and think I, no one's faster than me yeah. what happens so the timesheet <laughs> you know, no no you do don't you, you look yeah, at the timesheets yeah, yeah. we've all done it you, you, all you, you can't comprehend how yeah. anyone's gone faster well, that, that's it but then you look at that and go how the f- was that that slow and you're going yeah. in, I remember my dad now, we, we, I bought a caravan with my mum and dad for 300 quid. My mum could make a full Sunday lunch in this thing. It was crap, it was fantastically crap, you know what I mean? Mm. 
and we all gather around this little picnic table and I had this sheet in my hand, right? And they double side the sheets, so fast lads on the front, shite lads on the back. <laughs> and this is in the this is in the super twins and I'm going, Oh my god, what what, what, what how am I gonna tell me dad? I'll shit myself going. My dad's never gone, you gotta do this, never a mo never a mo yeah, yeah. he's always left me to it. He yeah. doesn't come watch me race or anything, just leaves me to it. And I'm still thinking, how am I gonna tell my dad this lap speed? So coming in I kind of hit it like a bad child you know what I mean I'm like bear in mind like I first got a bike at 21 I was 23 at this point I'm still shit scared of me dad I'm like I'm going oh am I going to tell him how am I going to tell him so anyway it comes in straight through the awning like stars in your eyes tonight yeah. Matthew I'm going to be a shit dad straight in <laughs> and he just went right let's have a look got the paper looked at the front side <laughs> immediately turned it over and he looked me square in the eyes and just went and laughed and just went, you'll never, you'll never make it as a TT rider. And that for me was a light switch. Not, not an abuse, not, not like, you know what yeah, I mean? It was yeah. like stuff. He was laughing and gig, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just like, he knew why we were both there to enjoy it and stuff like that. And I just went, you know what? But this, like the Manx, I did the Manx once and I just went, nah, <laughs> this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. And his, his fast lap speed was 121 mile an hour. And he, he's old school. I mean, he's so old school. It, it hurts. He, like he never, he bought an R1, never did a track day, nothing. First time he rode a thousand cc was down Bray Hill. Wow. He rode G50s and seven R's. You're talking 50 brake horsepower. Mm. And he went. Wow, that's quite something actually. That, that's it. To go down yeah. Bray Hill, and his fastest lap speed came to a 121. Yeah. And you know that that turn of the tide when you come in and you're just like. Do you want to have a look at this sheet, Father? It's, it's, it's on the front side. Do you want to have a look at that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that for me was my favourite moment. And, oh. Yeah, well, it's, I'm on the other end of that. Like yeah. I said, yeah. I just got a whooping. Yeah. That's, oh, that's classic. I've got a fantastic picture, though. There's, uh, we bought two RC 390s. With, uh, with, I, yeah. thought, I thought First, instead yeah. of buying loads of spares, I'll just get two because he's going to bloody crash it soon anyway. <laughs> so you know, that's the way it goes. And you just started and we went to Mallory. We did I think it was my... Um, ACU. Yeah, and we did a track day, and uh, I was on one of them, and he was on one of them. And there's a the photographer there got us going around. Uh, what's a big right hander called? Gerard's. Gerard's. Oh. And uh, it was literally like father and duckling, like, and it's just because obviously dad looked massive on it. Yeah, it's only it, was, it was. It's a beautiful picture. It's one of the, uh, you know, I've, I can I can visualise it in my mind. It's and now he's he's out there, and uh, I'm going to chuck him in at stock six, and just want to mention Nick Morgan. Uh, we're obviously doing this thing with MSS. Uh, love Nick. He got. We kind of got in touch with each other. Realised we were doing dad and lad stuff, and then went, "Let's do it together." Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, he's a, he's a great guy. Max, his son's a great guy. Uh, we're going to stay out of trouble. We're going to smile a lot, a lot more than most people do. Down gets uh, yeah in the British paddocks, and it's we're just going to go out. <laughs> yeah, and we're just going to try and really, really enjoy it. And whatever happens on track in terms of where the lads finish, who cares? And uh, we'll try and help them along the way, the best way we know how, and, and we're just going to go and give it a go. But I think my, my message to anyone listening that's involved in racing is you've got to enjoy it. You know, you've got to keep going down the class and getting less serious to get back to enjoying it if you're not enjoying it now. Because there's too much money involved in it. There is no magic ladder to anywhere spectacular. Um, it is about riding motorcycles and racing motorcycles and all racing motorcycle people are great. All people involved in motorcycle racing are great. Unquestionable, but I know where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're great. So, but just, just, just don't get carried away with it. It doesn't take you anywhere spectacular. Um, if you're enjoying it and, you're, and, and you're, you're on your way up, great. But as soon as you stop enjoying yourself, don't mean to say you've got to bow out. Just go back to a place that you can afford that gets you smiling again. Keep racing motorcycles. Brilliant bit of advice. Now, uh, there's one thing that I seen on your Facebook not long ago, which I wanted to ask about. You said, not not long ago, you had a um, a post on about something about changing your life for the better recently. Yeah, yeah. Is is that a long winded story, or is that? No, I got into I got into uh, music festivals, and in quite a big way. And uh, what timing, huh? With COVID. And uh, we were just about to, uh, we we did three festivals, three three day festivals in 2019. And we were just about to do a big festival for 2020 and then the pandemic turned up and that kiboshed out. And then we tried to reschedule an even bigger one for this year and we've pulled that as well. Um, so I just decided to A, get out of that because 
it was not going anywhere under the current you know, the way things are right now and I was spending a lot of energy on it and um, it was kind of that really and there's a lot of work to be done at home and I was, I'm working on a lot of kind of building work on some land we got and I'm just a man that never stops <laughs> and with and I'm going racing with my son and I wanted to spend a bit of time with my daughter who's fantastic um, she's 17 just kind of learn how to drive and doing all those things in life and yeah it was a bit of that oh that's fun now we've got just one question on the uh, on our patrons page from Mike Orton he, he asked a few questions but the the pick of the questions is who has been the best at getting the best out of the riders in terms of like you, people that you've like team managers or whatever that you've employed who's been the best at, at extracting the best out of your riders <sighs> so um Really, a good guy. That's so a good, that's a difficult. Question. Yeah, a few good guys. So um, I can mention a few guys. They've all been great. Um, hi, Terry White. Well, licorice, by the way. Um, licorice. Yeah, <laughs> liquors. And uh, <laughs> so uh, everyone would know Spanner Chris, who works with Taron McKenzie right now. He's a good guy. Um, Darren Jones, who works for Hickey now, runs pretty much kind of runs the FHO outfit. Really good guy. They're both very good at getting good stuff out of riders. Um, I remember uh, as a, 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 a electronics engineer we hired for a good few years called Andrea Torniero. Uh, worked for us at BSB, really good guy. Pete Clifford, uh, really good guy. Um, but what I like to think about GB Moto as a whatever, in whatever guys is is that we try to work all work on getting good stuff out of riders. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a crew chief's job, I believe it's all of our jobs. Full atmosphere, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you know when you're in a good place, you know when you're in a good team. Yeah. And it really does Happy improve. lads are fast lads. Yeah. You can never get away it from really that. It really improves old. your yeah. performance as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one, another thing, final thing from, my, from me, yeah. uh, and this is to both of you, I want you, your top three in the BSB Championship this year, predictions. Oh, Who are you yes, fancy? come on. Fuck. Go on, Max. Go Straight on, up the back. Uh, Go on, Max. Come on. Oh, God. Uh, I think... I think O'Hanlon looks really good mm. in testing. Um, He's definitely I, I the I think best. he always does look quite good in testing, but... You know, he did have a really strong season last. I feel Two like he's injury free. He's feeling confident. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's maybe his time. You know, it's going to come together. So I'm going to say O'Halloran. Uh, I think Brooksy is still going to be really hard to beat. So I'm going to say Brooksy second. Uh, and third, I think it could be someone like no one really expects because there's a few of the young guys recently that are looking really fast. Uh, I mean, like Kyle Ride's been been looking good so, uh, someone like that you know he's he's actually turning from that outside bet to going after yeah like you know actually, what I mean he's, like, he's, he's just here we go yeah he's... not that far out so yeah that that'd be a bit of an odd top three but yeah that's mine either you've got gas or you're really thinking hard here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Both. I>, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll wait till I leave the trailer. Uh, I think oh, top three I think O'Halloran uh, I think Eden hmm and the third one, I just can't say. It could be one of anyone. Mm -hmm. See, that's that's the side of a good championship, that, isn't it? Yeah. But, that, that was top three last year, wasn't it? Brooks, Eden, and O'Halloran. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've got a feeling, I'm, I, for no good reason, because I, I really rate him and respect him, I've got a feeling it kind of might just be a bit too late for Brooksy. Um, uh, having said that, I hope you make a mockery of what I just said. But... Um, I just think O'Halloran, Eden. I loved the way Christian was putting it about last year. He looked like he's, he's got had to stay. got a, got mm. a grip of it. Mm -hmm. um, um, I do know that the new BMW is good. The new one is good, um, right. very good. Mm. Um, and I think that will make a good bike. But I don't know if there's, you know, I don't know how that's going to pan out in terms of championship. What I do like, I would just like to say by finishing that is. I'm loving some of the new young superbike riders coming through. I'm loving Rory Skinner. I'm loving uh, you should be on one. Uh, you should be on one. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that. Thanks. I know that. And and uh, there's there's a lot of young lads out there right now. That it's it's their time. Vic Vickers is coming really good. Yeah, Vickers yeah. is good. 
It's their time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we need to do more in this, I believe, in this championship, the, the British Superbike Championship, is do what we did with Jake Dixon. Give them a platform, give them a team, and then send them on their way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, honestly, my own view is like it's great people hanging around for ten years, but is it? It's not. It's it's good for our community, but not for the nation. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good. It's good. It's mad know when you think of the average age in like the top ten in MotoGP. The average age is like something Seven. like twenty three or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. And then you think of if you took the average age of the top say ten in BSB, mm. you know, uh, how is Brooksy getting on for? I think Brooksy's no the oldest out of the yeah, yeah, things, but is. you know, he won last year. He's the he's the marker at the moment. And yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. It would be it's great to see younger riders coming mm. through. And um, yeah, I guess you're looking at the support classes, looking for who's coming through and who's next. And yeah. Uh, Dav, da- quick question, right? If you're going to start a team, what bike and two riders? Go. Don't think oh, too long. Uh, just go. Come on. Uh, off of what you said, I'm going to say BMW. Right. Uh, and is it riders from BSB? No. Actually, I'm going to open up the book. Oh, what? So I can just have a MotoGP ride? Nah, box that. Let's go <laughs> yeah. BSB. Let's go BSB. Uh, I, Let's would go BSB. Have, I would have Roy Skinner. Right. I think he's quality. And I would actually... I'd have Chrissy on it as oh, well. Oh, you kiss us. Nice no, I would. I, would. <laughs> I, think, I think you should come up as well. I agree. I think, yeah. I'd have Roy Skinner and Chris Rouse. They are straight off the bat. Just copy me, really. They are. On, on the BM as well? <laughs> yeah. There we are. Sorted. Right. So if any Simple sponsors would like to join on, <laughs> we're going to start a new team here. They are fantastic. I've but just no. hacked off a few people. I know they are. I know that. I <laughs> know. Oh, oh, it's all good yeah. fun. But honestly, like, like I'm trying to... Anything else? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, if, um, do you want to give a quick shout out to your social medias? Yep, uh, mine is uh, just Max Smith Halverson, unfortunately my really long name, uh, on, on my Instagram and uh, same as Facebook. So, uh, yeah, that's me. I'd uh, appreciate uh, any. Jeff, like, t- obviously you've got the race bike <laughs> stuff, but is there a team? team no, not, not really. I, we so, have GB Moto, don't we? Yeah, stick it all in MSS Performance's way. Um, they're a great company. Nick's a great guy. He's been in racing like me for donkey's years. And uh, one of the things I know we do pretty well is just kind of make sure that we get them out there this year and uh so yeah mss performance all the way <laughs> fantastic fantastic well, i tell you i've i've really re- i always say this on the podcast but i like that's because you're getting a super bike ride that's what <laughs> I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed um you know having a, having a bit chat i know you were nervous about coming on but like yeah. you you can't tell you're nervous at, right. at all it's uh, right. it's funny you, you, do, do you know like have you ever done anything in front of an audience like a live audience yeah. like a speaker have, in front, yeah. yeah and like this you know if there's like thousands of faces watching you it's quite daunting where in yeah. here you, you it's like a little tartar so you just get like in yeah. a box yeah. and you just forget the cameras are there but yeah. there's but now uh, we can put them on the spot we have over 80 thousand people download oh. this each month so they are i put you on the spot so yeah. there we go is that right yeah honestly yeah 80 thousand we're gonna have to have a little check what's over crazy is, it goes out. no you're not on a <laughs> what's crazy as well is um on the podcast chart it tells you the cunt like how you're doing in the country so if you go to chartable.com and you type in jason i've seen it's on your um, and stories and stuff. yeah and like there's countries like would do really well in china romania like B- bulgaria south ends. africa and you just think <laughs> hopefully like, not france <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. We, we are actually in the charts in France, but you think like it's, it's Dom. He's, he's there a great equivalent. Of, he's there a equivalent of Borat. They love him. <laughs> Borat. Very nice. Yeah. But on, on that, huge, a huge thank you to our sponsors, uh, Colchester Kawasaki, all of yeah. our patrons, and uh, yeah, look forward to following your progress this year, lads. And catch, catch thank up you so much. Good luck this. Us. Good luck this weekend. I was about to say good luck. Well. Good luck in the weather's there. So there we go. But I tell you, what, sorry, this is a selfish note. I must say thank you so much to Tony and the staff there for sorting out my dad to get them on that track yeah. day, swapping my spot and all the great work. And but all seriousness, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been absolutely min crack. And good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. See you in a bit. Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.